Hi everyone, I hope you're all well and enjoying the conference. Uh, my name is Dara Coakley and I'm an LX designer and developer based in the Munster Te Technological University in Ireland and the Cork campus. Uh, for anyone unfamiliar, Cork is here and some of the more famous people from Cork include Graham Norton, uh, Donoco Callahan, and Roy Keane. And I mention all of this just at the beginning because even though I'm a very proud Corkman, I'm aware that the Cork accent isn't always the easiest to understand. So if you've ever struggled to understand what Roy Keane is yelling about, then my accent might also be a bit of a challenge. So I just want to offer apologies at the beginning for that. Um, I actually did produce subtitles for this video, but unfortunately they're only also available in a Cork accent. So again, apologies for that. So the starting point for what I'd like to talk about today is based on what Zimmerman referred to as the great onlining or the great online learning experiment. And I'm aware I'm preaching to the choir, but with the 2020 pandemic, there was a massive shift in the delivery of teaching and learning. In particular, I need to move all teaching, all learners, all people uh, to emergency remote teaching or ERT or Emergency Remote Education, or ERE. So regardless of subject matter being taught or previous experience with digital delivery, everyone everywhere was required to quickly develop the skills and knowledge needed to move their teaching and learning online. And obviously very well done to all of you in terms of facilitating and supporting that. And what this means is that we now all find ourselves in a new landscape post COVID in terms of digital teaching and digital learning. But in this new landscape, we also find ourselves facing barriers, some new, some not so new. Uh, one barrier is digital fatigue post ERT. Uh, Erton and Odzimer refer to this as stress, fatigue, desensitization towards the environment, loss of interest and physical and mental problems. And Boskert and Sharma have noted that after the pivot to online learning, there's been widespread reports of digital burnout and fatigue. And that is likely <coughs> to continue to be an issue in the near and the distant future. Another barrier which arose during COVID and continues to be referenced is a lack of distinction between emergency remote education with properly planned distance learning. And Boskert uh, distinguishes between the two as distant education being an optional planned activity which is grounded in theoretical and practical knowledge whereas ERT is a mandatory survival mode of education implemented in times of crisis. So faced with these issues the research question for me around this session was around how we could be keeping going. How do we ensure that all the skills and the knowledge around digital teaching and learning which was developed during COVID is not lost um, certainly hybrid and high flex delivery uh, approaches offer a very strong means of proceeding and keeping that uh, engagement and those skills and knowledge alive. But those would obviously require huge investment and would also require a fundamental change in how teaching and learning systems operate. So my interest is based around the flipped classroom as a kind of a middle ground and a kind of first step in the post ERT landscape. So the flipped classroom, I'm sure you're all aware, broadly aims to increase student engagement by having learners undertake self-study, usually through digital resources prior to a live class, and then using class time for active collaborative activities. But traditionally, the flipped classroom has a number of barriers associated with its implementation. Uh, teaching staff need to be able to use digital technologies to produce quality resources that can be accessed outside of the classroom. And even beyond learning how to use the tools, teachers also need time and space to be able to create digital resources that are relevant to their learning outcomes and their teaching plans. Um, there is also, with all of this, uh, a very common element, which is that people not unjustifiably have to be convinced that all this effort has benefit to it. So they kind of need to be sold on the use of these tools and technologies. But in the post-COVID landscape, many of these barriers have been at least addressed, if not fully realized. All teachers during COVID were required to develop the skills and knowledge required to teach in a digital format. 
Um, in terms of developing digital resources, most universities, ourselves included, have, from the ERT period, a full year of recorded lectures available. And because these lectures were planned and delivered by the teachers themselves, they're guaranteed to align to the teachers' required learning outcomes and the teachers' teaching approaches for their uh, programs. And in terms of attitudinal change or the selling required, this has not for everyone, but for a great many, arisen as a result of the ERT period. Within our own university, the Department of TEL undertook a large-scale survey around the experience of over 283 staff and 1,700 students, and the majority of both staff and students identified a number of major benefits to the digital teaching experience and digital teaching approaches. If you'd like to know more about that survey, by the way, my colleagues Garoto Sulawan and Tom Farley have a data set based on this data set on student experiences and perceptions of emergency remote teaching in an Irish university. So something for the post-COVID landscape, I've undertaken work around a flipped classroom framework, and I've tentatively called this for flip's sake. I would note that there's nothing particularly groundbreaking nor particularly new in this approach. It's really more of an attempt to equip educators and edtechs with a practical way to introduce the flipped classroom in the post-COVID landscape. And at the heart of this is something noted by Chris Didi at a global education keynote in 2011. And he identified that with a flipped classroom, many educators may not actually know what to do in the classroom with that whatever they want to do time. So the first step in the for flip sake process is to set an intention. So for teachers to consider how extra in-class time uh, typically spent teaching content could be alternatively spent. And this could be anything from extra time in the lab to discussion and debate to group or individual feedback to actual application and practice. After that intention is set, step one then is to identify existing content which is taught in class but which students could potentially absorb by themselves. And this is essentially kind of, can think of this essentially as a process of freeing up in class time for more engaged or practical activities. Step two then is to develop the digital resources based on the identified content for the students to review outside of class or pre-class. And in the post-COVID landscape, an immediate asset for these two steps could well be the existing lecture recordings, which were developed during the COVID period. And because these lectures were developed and delivered by the teacher, they're all but in assured to be relevant to the teacher in terms of the learning outcomes and also their place in the teacher's teaching plan. And because the lecture recording is already available, the work in actually producing a usable, viable digital asset is minimal. So with the out-of-class resources done, the next step then is to, place the f to plan the face-to-face -face activities for the in-class period. And this goes back to the intention set at the start. The final step is to communicate all of this to students and to apply it with them. Um, the pre-class digital resources and the in-class activities. And for those in-class activities, there's a number of useful frameworks that can help guide that, such as the ABC approach. There's an additional kind of final thought around this, something that did stand out to me while I was working on this was uh, something that I hadn't heard articulated much in Ireland, at least. So I mentioned earlier that the landscape had changed for teachers and for students post-COVID. But a key consideration is that that landscape has changed for us EdTech and LXD folk as well. Um, as Christine mentioned, one of the biggest challenges to the flipped classroom is not actually a technical one, but a pedagogical one. And this role of giving pedagogical advice is something we saw a great deal of uh, during the ERT period. But historically, a lot of people like ourselves, um, edtechs and LXD people and digital teaching and learning people have been very reluctant to advise on anything other than digital tools. But to avoid that inertia or that kind of slide backwards post-COVID, there may be a need for us to actually step into the classroom and advise on things you don't just plug in. 
So if you'd like to know more about this approach or if you'd be interested in piloting, I'd really welcome any and all input. And ultimately, I'd hope that this framework would be a collaborative project and not just my own and that people can adapt it as they require. So if you would like to know more about it, I have information and guidelines at my website, perfectlycromulent.ie. So please do feel free to get in touch if you're interested. Other than that, thank you so much for your attention and I do hope that you enjoyed the rest of the conference.